Hello everyone and welcome back to the Kookily Bushcraft channel. Okay, so yeah, the lighting in this workshop's uh, pretty awful. I apologise for that. But Dennis Holmbacker from Nordic Knife Designs has Nordic Knife Design even has kindly sent me this. So blade blank. This is the NKD. What is it? Timber eighty five. So nice little drop point Borgo blade. I think that I think that's going to be an awesome little carving knife once I get it finished. As if I put a decent handle on it. Okay, so what I've got is I've got I've got a dog walking around distracting me. Uni, come and say hello. Come on, come on. Ah, say hello. <laughs> I've got a big chunk of brass. And I've got this stuff. I've uh, Acrylester, it's called. It's some kind of acrylic. Uh, so, never used this before. Uh, I do tend to use mostly wood and antler. I thought I'd have a go with something different. The blade itself is 80 CRV2 steel. So, those of you who follow the channel will know that I really like 80 CRV2. I was very determined to get this video filmed and uploaded in one day. That was a couple of weeks ago now. But there I've got everything cut to size. And I just need to drill the holes out. So the right thickness of drill bit. And I like to get everything to fit perfectly. What went wrong is in my haste to get the acrylic onto the tang. I tried to force it a little bit too hard and I split the block. So I came up with another plan. You might be able to hear the snow plough going outside. I apologise for that. But here's the new plan. <laughs> so I believe that's Corian and that's acrylic. So these are just a few offcuts I had knocking around. So we'll see what we can do with them. So still got the uh, the bit of brass to go on the end. It is quite a lot of brass and it is going to be cold in my hands this time of year. But yeah, never mind that. I like brass. Okay, I can see daylight, so that's good. So I've drilled two holes in the top, one in the bottom. And I've got a way to go with the filing. That's how we're looking so far. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take it all off. I'm going to sand the brass down. And uh, hopefully that'll get rid of that gap. I'll drill a slightly bigger hole in the bottom here. So as when I peen it over, it should all disappear into there. Then, uh, yeah. Before I peen it, I'm also going to heat the tank up a little bit and cut it. Heating it up will make it softer, more pliable. Uh, basically, it'll un undo any heat treatment that's happened to it, making it a softer steel. So I should be able to peen it over a lot easier. There we go, that should do us. No, that's not food, it's epo epoxy. It's epoxy, it's not food. You can't eat that, I can't get the top off. Ah. Ah. Aha. Will I find that top again? Let's hope so. Right. So this is the fast setting stuff. So maybe I'll still be able to do a little bit of shaping today. Really, really short of time. I really did want to get this finished today, but never mind. Right, so the bolster first. So that side goes down. Which side goes down? That side goes down. Let's get a bit in the tang. There we go. 
plenty in there. Fill all the holes. So what snags that one? Okay, so we're gonna have got quite a thin side there, that's the front, that can go to the front, according to the little design that goes a little bit thinner there. There we go, stick that one on. Next one. Into your like holes. I mean it's supposed to be five minutes this goes off in. I generally for knife making, especially with the uh, with the giddy winkles, <laughs> I like to use the uh, slow epoxy because it gives you a little bit more time to correct things. I forgot about that. <laughs> That'll get a red vulcanized fibre. Shall I stick it in somewhere else? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Doesn't make a big difference. Maybe I'll put it on the end. Okay, so I think this epoxy is actually freezing rather than going off. Really not a good temperature to be doing this in. Okay, there we go. Next one. Move them into the hole. Uh -huh. So, it's just the end cap. Just the end cap. So that goes on like that. Way round. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. Right. Let's try not to break the feet. No gaps. No gaps that I can see right now. Okay. This bit might take a while. So we've got the knife drying somewhere warm now. Should only take a few minutes. So yeah, I'm uh, not very professional at this uh, at all. I've made a few knives. I've taught a few other people to make knives. But as if there's anybody with any suggestions other than don't make knives in a hurry, which uh, <laughs> I... Uh, I've already figured that one out for myself. It's not the first time I've done something like that, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, any tips are more than welcome. Yes. No. Look over there. It's a bit boring making knives, isn't it? It's a bit boring. We want to go camping. Ordinary belt sander in a vice. I find the nose is good for getting in around there. So here we are again, back in the workshop. I'm really struggling to find the time to uh, finish this. But basically, that end piece, too heavy. I'm going to try and take a bit of weight off that. And I've still got a little more shaping to do on the handle. Okay, so I'm just doing a little bit of sanding now. When I find any uneven bits, I'm going back to the belt sander, which I've got set up over there. I'm currently over here because it's the only part of the workshop where I haven't got a light behind me. <laughs> Not set up for filming this place. Uh, yeah, so the balance point now is just behind where my first finger's going to be. Uh, the handle is... A little bit on the heavy side. I think I've now figured out why they tend to use hollow for rules rather than big chunks of brass. Uh, but yeah, of course, on the front it's not so much of a big deal. Uh, at the back it is. So that's a bit shorter now. I've repeined it. Fits my hand quite nicely. So yeah, I'll get this polished up and sanded down and I'll do another video on this knife shortly. I'll do a little review 
of this one but first I'm going to do the other NKD knife uh, so I'll do a review of the, the blade and also the job I've done on the, the handle and yeah so it's been a bit chaotic quite a lot of things gone wrong I mean I've put handles on about 20 knives so far in my life something like that that's just a random guess but uh, none of them have gone <laughs> quite so badly as this one but it's a learning experience isn't it and uh, also hopefully for you guys which is what YouTube videos is all about about sharing your learning experiences you do look a lot more professional as if uh, you're not learning while you're making the video but I'm not professional so I don't care don't be in a rush okay well thank you very much for watching everyone and uh, I'll see you all again soon for another Googly Bushcraft video Bye for now.